This is WACR 90.3 FM. You're listening to the Building Bread Show with Kevin Matthews. And if you have not heard, if you have not heard, we have Grant Sabatier in the studio. And we've been talking about life. We've been talking about money, obviously, and really the balance between what you value and the things that it's going to take to get there. And you had mentioned about finding yourself. How exactly, and it just definitely depends on who you're talking to and what they're doing, but how do you go about that process? Or how, yeah, how did you specifically go through that process of finding yourself? Because that really defined, you know, you know what you like, you know what you want, and now I'm going to do X, Y, and Z to define freedom. But for someone who, you know, it took me a while to find myself, I don't know if I found him yet. Um, but how would you go throughout that process? Yeah, so everyone, um, we're always in a process of becoming. Mm-hmm. You know, we're always growing, we're always changing. And that's the hard thing about money is because the finance industry sells a level of precision that's unrealistic. You know, who I am at 33 is different than who I was at 30, 25. We're always changing, we're always growing. So the question is, how do you invest your money for the you that you've yet to become? Mm-hmm. And man, it's harder work. It's real hard work. And, you know, the most stressful question that anyone asked me in my 20s was, you know, what's your why? What's your purpose? Mm-hmm. What's your, you know, what's your meaning? What do you love? What makes you happy? Because I didn't know those things, man. It, um, I needed time and space to figure it out. And the thing is, most people don't know their why. And I didn't figure out my purpose in life until I was 31. And, you know, once I became financially independent and I started writing about it, you know, about a year in 2016, I started getting uh, emails uh, from readers. You helped me save thirteen thousand mm-hmm. dollars. You saved my marriage. You know, you helped me start a twenty thousand dollar a year side hustle. And those emails filled me with a level of joy that was beyond any amount of money that I've made. And for me, if like I would tell you, if if I five years ago, if I said I had a mission in life, like you know, I would have laughed. You know, and one of those things is sometimes your purpose in life. You can't chase after it. You just got to give yourself time and space for it to show up. And you don't know when it's going to show up. And so we're always in a process of growing. And I think a lot of people, you know, we're all changing and, and, and we're trying to grasp to, a, you know, a version of who we were two mm-hmm. years ago. We try to stick to that. But you got to let yourself grow. I mean, like, to me, the purpose of life is to be fully alive. Mm-hmm. And to be fully alive, it means to be uncomfortable sometimes. Mm-hmm. And things that make you uncomfortable, the reason they make you uncomfortable is because they mean something to you. Right. So you should actually be walking into that uncomfort, not walking away. Right. And the thing, it takes time. Everything takes time. And when you're stressed out about money, you're stressed out about your job, you're stressed out about your boss, it's really hard to get perspective on your life. And so in my book, Financial Freedom, I talk about, you know, the first level is clarity. Just getting clarity on where you are. And that means... Um, with your money, calculating your net worth, which is your assets minus your liabilities, but also looking at your life and looking at the people around you and the people you're surrounding yourself with and just getting clarity on where you're at and because you can't get to where you want to go until you know where you are. And then the second thing is just to get breathing room. And that's the thing, man. I had $2 to my name and I was living with my parents and I had nothing. And if I had just saved a goal to save a million dollars, I would never have gotten there. You know, the important right, thing right. is if you're stuck in your life, you, you got to get some perspective. Mm-hmm. And the easiest way to do that, save three to six months of expenses. Mm-hmm. That's it. Because once you save six months of expenses, you're going to be worried less about your boss buying you right. or if something happens. That's true. Yeah. And you're going to, it's like climbing a ladder. You're going to get to level two and you're going to see over the fence mm-hmm. and everything's going to be a little bit clearer. And so I encourage anyone that feels stuck in their life, just get some breathing room. And it might take you six months to save six months of expenses, it might take you three years. No matter how long it takes you, you know, your first $5,000, $10,000, it's gonna be the hardest amount of money uh, that you're ever gonna save. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, everything gets easier. Yeah. And that's the thing is when you're stuck, you don't get that perspective and then you start eating your, you know, everyone, man, I've talked to tens of thousands of people around the world and most people are like two or three steps away from a life they really love. Mm-hmm. And often one or two of those steps, they're money related. Right. So get yourself some breathing room to get a little perspective. And it's going to change the way you see your life. It's going to change the way you see the world. You're going to be able to sleep better at night. Don't worry about the million dollars. Don't worry about what the world is telling you. Just just get some breathing room in your life. Yeah, I think it's, it's important to say, and almost what you had mentioned, that that 
the definition that you know, wh whatever you say that is your thing, your passion, your purpose, whatever that is, that can often change based on where you are and your age. I think the most, one of the most challenging things for me when I became a father almost a year ago was sitting back and redefining what is it that I really want and how do I want my life to look. And some things stay, stayed the same, but there were some goals that just came out of nowhere. And it wasn't just, oh, let me save for college so we can avoid student loan debt. Like, yeah, that's one of them. But how I wanted to be and what I wanted to do with my time and what I wanted to do completely changed. Like, I went from, you know, I still want to inspire people. Like, we have this show. I do want to do that. Like, those, I get those emails from time to time. That is inspiring. But I got, you know, I spent a lot of time watching college football. Like, I'm just a college football fanatic. And um, me and my dad would wake up every Saturday morning and like watch whatever game. Um, so I went to the Red River Rivalry, which is the um, Oklahoma Texas game in Dallas last year. It's my first time going to that game that we had watched every single year growing up. And that's when I realized like I want to be able to take my son to each one of these games. You know, if it's Alabama and Auburn, like go play that. If it's you know Syracuse and West Point or something, I want to be able to have the freedom to do that. And that was something that. I had not had, but having like, this is, I wouldn't call it my purpose, <laughs> but that's something that I enjoy, and I can start to back into how much I take it, you know, how do I structure my life and my schedule so I can do this full time or seasonally, I guess. Um, but yeah, that, that definition can change, like, it could be basketball <laughs> in a few years, or my son may not like football and we can change it up, um, but finding who you are and knowing that, that that can be fluid is extremely important. Yeah, and this, uh, this moment is all there is. Yeah. Like right now. Yeah. Like we're never going to go back this time. Right. And the thing is, especially when you have a kid, you have friends, um, there's so much more to life than money. And, you know, you can love your life even with very little money. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the thing. That's the best thing to do is to sit at a time when you have a child, when your friend is diagnosed with a disease or you lose a friend. Um, there are a lot of things in our life that can help us wake up. Right. And that's the thing, man. A lot of people are asleep. Yeah. It's easy to be asleep. You know, the world, that's kind of what we're taught to do. But, you know, don't wait till you're, you know, you're on your deathbed or something huge happens in your life to make that shift, uh, you know, to those things that actually matter. And a lot of times you can always go back in life. You know, that's one of the things a lot of people are like, sitting in a job they don't like. You know, worried, ah, you know, I can't quit, I can't change anything up. You've got skills, you can always go back to that job. Well, you can't get back is that opportunity that you see right in front of you, man. Because mm -hmm. it's just, just a little bit of fear, but life, it's all about calculating this, you know. And it's great you did that, man. Yeah. It's great you took that time to prioritize what makes you happy. And, um, that's easier said than done. Yeah, it, it is. It's when you're faced with a life challenge, and it could be, it's not always like, you know, a birth or something. It could be moving. You know, you are, uh, you could be identified with this place in time. You know, I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I've moved to New York. I've been to Dallas. I've been to St. Louis. I've lived in Virginia. Like sometimes it's just I'm in a new place. I don't have the same support. How do I? Who am I really when I'm not, you know, in that same environment? But I wanted, I wanted to go back to the to the income piece and kind of getting that that breathing room. When it comes to raising your income, even if it's just a small side hustle, two hundred dollars a month or something, how do you? Well, what are some tips that can help people get started in finding that thing and then making sure that thing is consistent enough to, to get them further along. Yeah, so the first thing, just before we touch on side hustles briefly, um, you got to optimize your full-time job. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of things. A lot of people think they deserve a raise, and they do, but they don't ask for one. Or when they do ask for one, they don't ask for enough. Mm -hmm. And so in the book, Financial Freedom, I walk through a step-by-step -step process to analyze your market value, which is how much another company would pay you for your time and your experience. Mm -hmm. Very important to start with your full-time job first, yeah. man. Because you're making money from your full-time job, you're probably leaving money on the table. Yeah. Maybe you can negotiate you know, a $10,000 raise or a $5,000 raise or a bonus or the ability to work remotely. So you gotta start there, man. Too yeah. many people jump right to the side hustle and they're leaving money on the table. Yeah, there's a, there was a study, I think, out by Forbes where those who don't switch jobs every, I think it's two or three years, yeah. leave money on the table. So much money on the table. Yeah, I, I would not have been in the six-figure range if I didn't switch jobs. Yeah, because every time you switch jobs, what happens is your your market rate is recalculated because exactly. another company is looking at your skills and your experience. Right. But you don't even have to jump jobs. You can do that 
you know, um, one of the simplest things to do is just Google recruiters and then whatever industry you're in. Because mm -hmm. recruiters, you know, these people that get paid when they place you into jobs, yep. they've got a really good handle on what you should be getting paid based on your experience. You reach out to one recruiter and have a 30 minute conversation, there's a 50-50 chance that they have another job that some company's looking for someone like you. You can get a $20,000 raise just in a 30 minute phone call. Mm -hmm. And most people don't even do that. And then those recruiters are incredible relationships that you can keep on building over yeah. time. But coming back to your side hustle question, you know, everyone wants to make money on the side. A lot of people think about side hustling wrong. And it's fine to drive for Lyft or drive for Uber and make mm -hmm. a couple hundred extra bucks. But the problem with Lyft or Uber and those type of companies is that you're limited to the hours that you can work. And so you can only drive so many hours in a day before yeah. you're so exhausted. And how much you're getting paid is determined by Lyft or Uber. It's not determined by you. Right. So all you can do is trade more of your time. You can't make more money. Mm -hmm. And so side hustling for someone else versus side hustling for yourself is very different. And I talk a lot about this in the book. And it's so much easier in life to make money doing those things that you enjoy or you like or you love than it is just to go out and you know drive a car around. Maybe you like that, but you know there's a simple exercise that I have in the book where you make a list of all the hobbies that you have and all the things that you love doing, and then a list of all your skills, and then you look for overlap between those two things. Mm -hmm. And just trying to make a couple extra hundred dollars a month doing something you love, what's gonna happen is you're probably gonna feel inspired mm -hmm. and you're gonna feel empowered. And making money on your own outside of your full-time job, it can get addicting. And that's a really good thing. It is. And so following that, you know, never putting up too much money. You never want to put up money to start a side hustle. Right, right. Put, some diff put a couple irons in the fire. You know, see what you like. See what you enjoy. Feel it out. Mm -hmm. Too many people in our world think, oh, I, you know, I'm not an entrepreneur, which is not true. Everyone's an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to quit your job and jump in the deep end of the pool to feel it out. Mm -hmm. And that's the beautiful thing about side hustling is, you can dip your toe in the pool and your foot in the pool, feel it out, see what you like doing, see what you enjoy, right. and then recalibrate. Um, and then over time, man, during that five-year period, I made money 19 different ways. Wow. You know, I was testing things, what I like yeah. doing, what did I enjoy, and that's the beautiful thing about life is because sometimes just getting out there, you'll stumble on something, a money-making opportunity you never thought possible, you never thought you would enjoy, uh, and then a whole new world opens up to you, man. But a lot of people just, just, they take the money that they're given and they don't figure out any other way to make more. Right. But man, it's it's never been easier in history to make money. Oh, I absolutely never agree. Never been easier. Absolutely agree. This is Building Bread with Kevin Matthews on WACR 90.3 FM, The Voice of Harlem. We're going to take a very quick break before we wrap up. I hope that you have enjoyed the show thus far and stay tuned.